Hello, today we will talk about sinus infections. So first of all, we first of all we will get rid of the terminology. And there are two uh, uh, different terms uh, that are important to distinguish between two different entities. Those are rhinitis and sinusitis. So first of all, rhinitis. Secondary, sinusitis. So the first term, rhinitis, actually is the inflammation of the nasal mucosa. So in our nasal cavity, the nasal cavity is lined with uh, an inner lining called the mucosa. Once there is an inflammation in this inner lining, we can call this rhinitis. But once the inflammation is present in the sinus cavities, so the sinus cavities, they all have also the inner lining that is the mucosa. Once the mucosa in the sinuses is inflamed, then we call this sinusitis. But often, uh, in order for the mucosa and the sinus to get inflamed, the pollutants, the allergens, the pathogens come through the nose and infect also parts of the nasal mucosa. There is a, a term for uh, the uh, infection at the same time of the nasal and uh, of the sinus mucosa called rhinosinusitis. So, Sometimes people uh, that talk about sinus infections will also talk about rhinosinusitis because sometimes it's also hard to distinguish is or is it not only an uh, infection in the sinuses or is there involvement of the nasal mucosa. When it comes to uh, rhinitis, uh, rhinitis can be distinguished easily from these two uh, uh, terms. Sinus infections are more uh, problematic than uh, rhinitis or the inflammation of the nasal mucosa in most of the cases. In most of the cases, uh, rhinitis is just a viral infection and an inflammation of the nasal mucosa. You have a runny nose for a few days and it is a self-limiting condition. But infection of the sinuses is uh, a more complicated uh, story. So basically, for this uh, tutorial, for this lecture, we need to know that uh, rhinitis is an infection of the uh, muco, an inflammation of the mucosa of the nasal cavity, and sinusitis is a more complicated inflammation that uh, also develops in the uh, sinuses, and sometimes it is also called rhinosinusitis, depending on how prominent and how big the inflammation in the nasal cavity and the sinuses is. Because the sinuses are not uh, called parasinus, uh, parasinuses be because uh, just for story, they are called parasinuses because they are located on the lateral sides of the nasal cavity and they are connected uh, with the nasal cavity. So to recap a little bit of uh, anatomy, so the, we have four uh, parasinusoids, uh, parasinuses structures. Uh, uh, the biggest, uh, the biggest one of them is the maxillary sinus. So this one here. So it is the maxillary sinus. Or in Latin, it is called sinus maxillaris. Sinus. So this is the first one. The second one is the ethmoid sinus, or it is not as the maxillary sinus. It is a, the maxillary sinus is a big one, but in the in the case of the ethmoid sinus, it is actually of uh, more smaller ones. And because of that, they are called ethmoid cells. So 
ethmoid cells or the ethmoid labyrinth or in Latin cellulae or cellulae ethmoidales. Then we have the frontal sinus. So the frontal sinus or in Latin sinus front frontalis. The last one is actually in the sphenoid bone. It is called the sphenoid sinus. Or, or in Latin, sinus sphenoidalis. So these are actually the sinuses and they are called parasinuses because they are located on the lateral side of the nasal cavity. So para meaning lateral, nasal, paranasal sinuses on the on the lateral sides of the nasal cavity. So that is why they are called paranasal sinuses. So these are the structures that are involved, or uh, better to say their mucosa in the first acts is involved in uh, sinus uh, infections. So now, uh, once uh, we looked at the anatomy, we will look uh, a, a bit uh, at the uh, function. So there are many functions of these sinuses. They are uh, actually air-filled uh, air filled spaces in the head. So they lower the mass of the head. They are also shock absorbers and so on. But one of the big, one of the big um, function of the sinuses is uh, actually air conditioning. So as the air passes through the nasal cavity, it doesn't pass in a straight line like this. It actually enters the sinuses, it makes vortices, and in uh, that um, uh, 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 makes the time for the air to travel to the lower parts of the respiratory, respiratory system, it takes more time for the air to travel through this area. <clears throat> and in this time, the air gets conditioned so it doesn't get too cold or too dry into our lower respiratory system. So the sinuses uh, humidify the air so it isn't too dry. They are warming up the uh, outside air so it isn't too cold and they are filtrating it so that big particles don't go into the lower respiratory system. So the air is conditioned in the nasal cavity and in the sinuses for our lower respiratory uh, tract. That is the big function of the sinuses. Now, what is, if we're talking about sinusitis and sinus infections, what is the etiology? So, into the nasal cavity, of course, uh, it is not just with the air, many things come in different pollutants, different allergens, there, there is also a possibility for trauma. So if we have head trauma and that leads to an opening to the sinus, of course, outside bacteria can enter the sinus. If we had, for example, through a tooth here, and if the tooth was inflamed, uh, an infection could go to the, to the sinus. Outside, viruses and bacteria can cause rhinitis and then later sinusitis, especially if the if there is some predisposing uh, condition, for example, if the person has a lower immune system capacity, if, uh, for example, people who take corticosteroids who have diabetes, or people that have constant infections here uh, in the sinuses because they are constantly in some air polluted area. When we come to uh, to infectious uh, etiologies, they are mostly viruses. So, but those conditions are self-limiting. So, when we talk about viral pathogens, rhinoviruses, they can infect. They mostly infect the nasal mucosa. 
but sometimes they can spread to sinuses and give, uh, give them symptoms of sinusitis. Then also these viral infections in the nasal cavity can predispose, can injure the mucosa and the Im local immune system and predispose for bacterial infections. So these bacterial infections, uh, they can cause uh, sinusitis that gives those classic symptoms of sinusitis. We will talk about them a little bit later. And of course, there is a possibility for people that have a damaged immune system, uh, they can develop fungal infections, but they are more rare than, of course, virus and bacterial uh, pathogen infections of the nasal cavity and sinuses. Now, when we talk about symptoms, we saw that a runny nose uh, and feeling a little bit ill is a symptom of a simple viral rhinitis. In the case of uh, sinusitis, this is this is gets more complicated and symptoms are more pronounced. So, one of the symptoms is uh, a headache. Let's, so, a headache. So why do headaches happen? So once the sinuses clog up, uh, they mostly cause a headache in their area, but they can cause different types of headaches. Also, uh, people can feel a, a dull pressure when the sinus clogs up because of the mucus and infection. There can be dull pressure in the area of uh, infection. Also, if it is severe, people can feel pain over the sinus. And also, for example, if the maxillary sinus is infected, the area of the face can swell up. So this part of the face could uh, be visibly swollen. And it could be also uh, a little bit tender, red and um, warmer than the side that is not affected. Because if the infection develops here, there will be an immune uh, reaction and it will cause all these different uh, symptoms. So when the sinus opens, when this infection discharges, so this mucus and pus that has uh, built up, people can have a different nasal discharge. So with pus or uh, with blood. If these uh, sinus infections last for longer amounts of time, there can be damage to different structures. For example, the olfactory epithelium that is somewhere uh, here near the sphenoid sinus and people can have uh, uh, a damage to their sense of smell uh, uh, that is called hip osmia or if they lose their sense of smell, anosmia. So there can also uh, be symptoms like earfulness, bad breath, and so on. So uh, you see that uh, sinus infections have more uh, symptoms than a simple rhinitis, uh, and there are also more severe uh, condition, uh, conditions than uh, a simple rhinitis. So in order to distinguish between an acute uh, infection, so an acute uh, sinusitis and a chronic sinusitis, there are some different uh, classifications and criteria, but uh, we will explain the difference between acute and chronic and subacute and some other forms. So first of all, an acute sinusitis. So, the symptoms that I explained uh, just now, if they last, if they uh, uh, last up to four weeks, so no longer than four weeks, this is called acute sinusitis. If the symptoms last more than um, four weeks, it is called subacute. So between four weeks and 12 weeks, it is called subacute. So 
those symptoms that I explained of uh, sinus infection, they are like that in acute, sin uh, acute sinusitis. But in subacute, they are get a little bit. Uh, uh, they are not so prominent like in the acute phase. And people are saying that subacute sinusitis, where we have symptoms but they are not so pronounced, so milder. Uh, it's just a tr transitional phase to uh, chronic. sinusitis that lasts more than 12 weeks so in chronic sinusitis we have some mild symptoms but they are not uh, going away they are always staying there and sometimes this chronic sinusitis can get uh, exacerbated and that is called an acute exacerbation of chronic sinusitis. So in this acute exacerbation, people have always some kind of mild symptoms, some mild headaches, some mild runny nose, some mild cough, uh, some mild discharge. But uh, once, uh, in some, after some time, they develop symptoms like acute sinusitis, and then they take some antibiotics, it gets better, but it never goes away fully. In acute sinusitis, uh, once uh, the people take antibiotics, it goes away fully and it, uh, it, it is a solved problem. There is also another term when we discuss acute sinusitis that is called recurrent acute sinusitis. This term we use when uh, the patient has four or more episodes of sinusitis in one year. So in these cases it is easier to develop chronic sinusitis because of the chronic infections that are recurrent it can go in subacute and then into uh, chronic. And of course people that are uh, in a polluted area or where there are many allergens or many pathogens uh, can easier develop uh, more sinus infections in one year than people who live for example somewhere where the air is cleaner. With, uh, so this is uh, um, something where we would also explain the pathophysiology. So as I said uh, Rhinitis is an infection of the uh, mucosa of our nasal cavity. Our paranasal sinuses in acute uh, sinusitis can get affected through the nose. So once the pathogen, a virus, enters the nose and causes rhinitis, damages the nasal mucosa, it is possible for some inf uh, inflammation to develop, for example, in the maxillary sinus, in the frontal sinus, in the ethmoid sinus, sinus cells, in the sphenoid sinus. And then uh, we would have also not just a runny nose, but all those other symptoms, headache, uh, nasal, con nasal congestion, uh, dull pain, uh, pain over the sinus, uh, edema over the sinus location, a discharge with pus or just a simple discharge, some kind of cough cough happens because once this infection happens in our sinuses, uh, the sinuses, all of our sinuses uh, are actually opening up into the nasal cavity. This mucus, uh, mucosa produces mucus. The mucus is uh, led away via cells in the mucosa that have hair-like projections. And these hair-like projections lead the mucus away into the nasal cavity and then uh, down into the we swallow them up. Once uh, a pathogen enters, the mucosa tries to shield itself by producing more mucus. If more mucus is produced, these canals and openings, so the openings, for example, this is a small opening of the uh, maxillary sinus. These openings are called ostiums. So an ostium is a little opening where uh, the mucus is discharging. It is normally three to four millimeters in diameter. If we have an infection, more mucus 
production. So this would in the first phase be asymptomatic. So we have some uh, uh, pathogen or some pollutant that is causing a small uh, uh, inflammation of the mucosa. The mucosa produces more mucus and the mucus starts clogging up because it can't be eliminated uh, that fast these openings. Once the opening gets uh, uh, less than two and a half millimeter in diameter, that is a predisposition for infection because all that mucus that is clogging up, it is a good medium for bacteria to uh, infect. And then we would have an bacteria and pathogen that are always present entering and they would have an easier time infecting uh, our, our uh, sinuses. Once the sinus is infected with the bacteria, unclassic inflammation develops. In the first part of the inflammation, if the ostium is uh, clogged up, there will be no discharge. But as pus is, uh, so as the immune reaction happens, and as pus is uh, building up uh, in our sinuses, it can happen that uh, the pressure builds so much up that it opens up this ostium, and so we could have discharge. If the discharge happens out of the nose, we will see it. If it happens into the back of our throat, we will have a cough and we will have bad breath or fetor exora, as it is called in Latin. So that is the pathophysiology of an acute development. Then we take antibiotics and we uh, do some rest, uh, hydration, um, uh, also... Uh, warm showers, warm steamy showers, and we solve the acute, and we go out of the polluted area, and we solve the acute infection. But in the chronic, so in the chronic setting, there is something called biofilm. So in biofilm, it is a protective layer. So if the infection happens and happens, mucus develops, some bacteria can create this biofilm. It's like a house where the bacteria are protected and. Antibiotics in our immune system can't damage, can't damage them easily, this biofilm. And then once uh, the bacteria sense, I will say it like that, that there is a, a good environment for development, uh, this acute exacerbation happens. We take antibiotics, they die down a little bit and there are only mild symptoms. But once uh, a few months pass, they... Uh, build up an enough number of bacteria to cause another acute exacerbation. So that is how the pathophysiology works. When it comes to diagnosis, of course, the main focus in diagnosis of everything in medicine is anamnesis, so history taking, and uh, a good clinical examination. With those two, we can... Uh, uh, it can lead us to therapy, so a headache doesn't need to be sinusitis, it can be just a ten tension headache or a migraine, so it is important to take a good history and clinical examination. Also, paranasal sinus x-rays, so we can take x-rays and see how <clears throat> the area looks. Also, endoscopic examination can uh, give us some um, uh, insight in how uh, the nasal cavity and sinuses look. I will emphasize that this is very important in simple cases. If the cases are complicated, we need to go to <clears throat> uh, imaging diagnostics like CT. For complicated cases, chronic cases, and where surgery, endoscopic or classic surgery is needed, CT is the golden standard for visualizing the paranasal sinuses. Also, we can do MRIs. When it comes to treatment, so many of these, uh, any condition in medicine and also sinus conditions, uh, when we talk about treatment, can be treated conservatively. So we are thinking about rest, uh, hydration and antibiotics and other antipyretic medicine and so on and uh, surgery. When it comes to the conservative treatment, uh, most of the simple sinus infections are solved with antibiotic uh, treatment. And when it comes to uh, complicated infections, we need to do a 
uh, therapy, we f f first need to know what is causing the problem, and then the, th the therapy can be a combination of antibiotics and uh, minimally invasive endoscopic surgery or surgery that is uh, more uh, 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 more classic, more uh, opens the structures up more, but it is more aggressive. Thank you for listening. Uh, uh, this was an uh, overview of some important uh, ideas about sinus infections.